Hi everybody, my name is Margot Claussen. I am a director from Winkler, Manitoba. I've been a director for about two years and so some of you may have seen me before. So today what I want to talk to you about is bridal showers. I haven't done a whole lot but um, I've done um, one somewhat recently and I've been able to help with some and it was really really fun. So we're getting close to wedding season which means we're getting close to bridal shower season right and and just um, yeah, a, a Tupperware party, Tupperware shower is just a fantastic way to get a bride's cupboards filled with quality items. I was not one of those people who was fortunate enough to have a Tupperware shower when I got married. Um, and I actually had, I didn't know of anybody who was at that time, but now that I'm a Tupperware consultant, I've heard so many people say, oh yeah, they had a Tupperware shower when they got married and it was so awesome and they got so much great stuff. and. And I would have loved to have had um, quality things at that time. I was a really young bride, um, just did not start out with a whole lot. And I clearly remember super cheap, um, I think they were Frigidaire, they were not Rubbermaid, um, beige little plastic things that broke really easily and uh, just, not, just not quality items, right? So to be able to offer somebody a Tupperware shower is, is really exciting. So there are many ways to throw a Tupperware shower as there are many ways to throw a Tupperware party or any regular shower, but I'm going to talk to you about the way I did mine. And um, yeah, I think it went really well. We had a really good time. It was successful. The host got a lot of really great, great stuff. So, um, so yeah, I'm just gonna walk you through what I did with my planning and with the actual shower. And you can take any ideas that you like and tweak them. Um, and so when I was asked to do the shower, it was, uh, you know, a host that thought it would be a great idea. And so she asked me, but uh, there's, there's nothing saying that you can't ask um, a bride to be if you can host a shower for them, right? You can be the host and the consultant. That probably isn't typically how it works. I'm not sure, but, um, but yeah, in this case, I was asked if I would be willing to put on a bridal shower and I was really happy to, to do so. So, what we started with is, um, yeah, communication with the host is super important, right? The host may be a family friend, may be an auntie, may be a neighbor or whatever, but it's really important that you have um, good communication with the host so that you're both on the same page with who is providing what and how things are going to go. So um, it's the host's responsibility to send out invitations. So just like any other shower, it's really important to make these invitations personal invitations, right? So um, if you just see an invitation on Facebook saying, oh, I'm gonna have a Tupperware shower for so-and-so on such and such a day, you're welcome to come. Um, I know I am not super likely to just show up at a shower like that, right? You wanna know that, um, that you were intentionally included. And so I would strongly encourage the host to send out personal, private invitations, whether that's, um, I mean, they can be digital, that's fine, as long as it's um, personal, or whether she wants to mail some out if there's time for that, but just make sure that she sends out, um, yeah, personal invitations to the guests so that they feel special, they feel wanted, and, and also in those invitations, make sure it's very clear with the different ways that the guests can contribute to the shower. So, um, it, let them know that it's not just a regular shower, right? Where they're gonna bring gifts and buy Tupperware and contribute money or whatever, but that this is a Tupperware shower. That is the focus for this shower. And so list the different ways that they're going to be able to contribute. So they're either going to be able to give cash in a basket um, to, for, so that the host can purchase whatever it is she wants or they can purchase for themselves. And of course, anything they purchase for themselves is going to help the host because she's going to get more host reward gifts. Or they're going to be able to choose from the host's wish list, um, which we're gonna talk about that a little bit more. So just make sure that guests are gonna know that that they have, um, they're going to have these three different options to give. That also makes it very clear that these are the options and they don't need to bring another gift um, on top of that. So. 
So then the next really important thing is to get a wish list from your bride. So um, most Tupperware parties are made probably not surprises, I'm not sure. I suppose they still could be. So if, uh, if it is not a surprise, again, your host is going to know that. So if it's not a surprise, make sure that you also are in communication with your host, with your bride, or ask your host to be in, co in um, communication with your bride and get a detailed list, a wish list. So you can provide a catalog and maybe the upcoming sales ahead of time so that she can pour over that and decide what it is she would like to put on her wish list. And um, she may be very familiar with Tupperware and she may just be, um, you know, becoming familiar with Tupperware. But in any case, it's great to have a wish list and that wish list will likely change during and after her shower and that's okay. But then we've got a place to start. And so once I have her wish list, I'm going to get images of each of her items individually. So an individual item of the, um, an individual picture of the wish list or the wish that she wants, as well as the price that, that it's going to cost. And I'm going to put that onto some kind of a, you know, a four by six index card or something. There too, you can make it as fancy or as plain as you want to. I'm not a super creative person, so um, somebody else might make them a lot uh, prettier than I than I would but um, or you can let that be the responsibility of the host too right you can give her the images and ask her to make cards with these um, with these images on them so those are things that you're going to want to do well ahead of time and then another thing that I'm going to talk to the host about is um, I'm going to talk to her about making a corsage. So rather than an actual corsage that's going to become very heavy and hard to wear, what I did was I, I had a necklace made. So with, and you can, that too, you can make it as fancy or as simple as you want. So either just some plain ribbon or, um, you know, some fancy lace, whatever you want. Um, and in my case, my, the host, I knew, I, I knew her personally and I knew that she was much more creative than I was. So I just brought her the items and she put it together. So I brought her a bunch of Tupperware things that were then going to be my gift to the, to the bride. And so they could be kitchen tools because they've got the holes on the end, right? So, and yes, it's going to be a bigger, gaudier corsage. That's fine. That's part of the fun here. So um, the measuring cups work well because they've got the holes in the handles. Measuring spoons have the holes in the handles. Any of the keychains work great because you can just string them on. Um, uh, yeah, some of the other tiny treasures as well. So, uh, or you can even just like tie them up and tie them on if they don't have a hole in there anywhere, right? So, um, so yeah, just make make a variety pack for her for her necklace corsage or whatever so um, either bring the items to the host and ask her to put it together or you can put it together and bring it with you on the day of the shower so um, also uh, you need to talk with the host ahead of time about a menu so in a regular Tupperware party, we, we might tell our host, you know what, don't make any food. We're going to make all the food together so that we can show off our product. And um, I'm just going to give you a, a grocery list of things to buy so that we can make them together at the party. So showers, though, tend to be a little bit more elaborate, right? So for a shower, um, what, what we did is we did talk about a few things that we were going to make at the shower together. And then, of course, she she's a caterer. Um, it, as well so needless to say she had quite a spread but she um, she allowed me to keep some things that we were going to make together in in the party so that we could show off the the product so that worked really well so um, so yeah and then once we decided what we we're gonna make together I just gave her a detailed grocery list so that she picked all of those things up and had them ready for me at at the shower so uh, now we're gonna get to the day of the shower so of course we are we consultants are going to arrive early because we want to be well prepared and calm and um, yeah, just not flustered, right? We don't want to set that kind of a that kind of an atmosphere. We want to be confident. We want to be um, yeah, just sure of ourselves so that we can help to make all of the guests comfortable as well. So, on my table, I'm always going to have the bundle, the deluxe bundle at one end, always, always, always. So we always want to show off the great value that that bundle is. And um, so that's going to be there. The rest of the table is going to be whatever I want to highlight that day. So it might be some of the great sales that are on that particular month. Um, the, you know, cold brew is one that I show always at in-person events because it's such a 
top seller for me. It's such a popular item. I love mine, so I can authentically tell people about how much I how much I like it. And um, so yeah, whatever else you wanna showcase that, that day. And then also on the table are going to for sure be all of the items that I'm going to use in, in the demo. So I'm gonna have all of that ready before the guests arrive. I'm going to have a bowl where people are going to be able to put their, their gifts of cash into. Um, again, you can decorate that up if you want to or just have, a plain, have the plain bowl. Um, more than likely, I'm gonna take a bowl from my stock and that is also going to be a gift for the bride and either I or the host can, can decorate that. And I'm gonna make it clear as guests arrive that that's where they can put their, their gifts of money. And um, the, a card, there's gonna be a card there as well. Either I will pick up that card or the host will pick up the card. We'll arrange that ahead of time to who's going, who's going to provide the card, but probably the host is going to provide it. And then whoever contributes to the cash basket can write their name and, and a note in the card. So that that is happening you can already oh and then at that point you can already start showing guests the um the wish list uh cards as well so they can be on the table near the basket and and they can take a look on every seat there's going to be a catalog and a sales brochure so as they're sitting and chatting with whoever's sitting next to them uh, they can already be browsing through that um that browsing through the catalogs so and then the bride arrives and um, she's welcome. She put on her corsage, sit her down, and we're ready to start the formal part of the party. So uh, we are going to go around and do introductions. I'm going to ask everybody to say their name and what their connection is with the bride because these people may, be, um, may not be connected at all, right? Some might be work friends, some might be neighbors, some, some are likely family, uh, some might be childhood friends, um, whatever. But just let everybody know what their connection is with the bride. And then I ask people to tell the bride, what is your favorite piece of Tupperware in your home? What, uh, what do you find the most useful and, and why? And that is also going to give the bride ideas of what she really does want in her kitchen and that's how her wish list is likely going to grow. So we get introductions done. Um, I, might have, um, uh, I might have a guessing game happening at the table. So that could have also happened though before everybody sits down. So maybe it is going to be one of our glass and bamboo containers or a small modular mate and I will have M&Ms in there, jujubes or whatever and we'll just have a little guessing game and somebody's going to win that at the end of the day. Um, there are lots and lots of suggestions, ideas for games in top of the line. I tend to make them pretty low key and that's my personality because I remember too many, many parties where I felt very awkward and um, I did not appreciate certain games and so that's my personality and so that's how I tend to do the parties too. So, but one game that I will definitely do at any shower is the right left game. So again, on top of the line, there are several different versions of it, but there, and there are a few that are specific to bridal showers. So it's a story you're going to read and I'm going to have one or two or three, depending on how many guests there are, but I will have wrapped ahead of time, uh, one, two or three gifts and um, just give them to random people throughout the room. And then we're going to read the story, or I'm going to read the story, and they're going to be, the word left and right is going to be used a lot in this story. And every time those words are used, the gifts get passed to the left or the right. And uh, so that's a non-threatening, simple, fun, e yeah, easy game that we, that we can play. So that is likely something I'm going to do at every shower. And then at the end of the story, whoever is left with the gift gets to open and, and keep that gift. So that's likely as much time as I'm gonna spend on any games, unless the host has games that they want to do as well. So then I'm gonna to get to the demo of the party. So I'm going to talk about the deluxe bundle, of course, and just very briefly, I don't want that to take super long, but very briefly, I'm gonna talk about all of the individual items in the deluxe bundle, just so everybody is well aware of our most popular items and what their functions are, that there's a difference between, you know, the snack and store that they've been storing their Christmas goodies in in the freezer and the actual freezer mates and, and why, why it is that they actually want freezer mates. And of course, um, not everybody knows the wonders of Fridge Smarts yet, and everybody needs to see that there is um, a chopper in the bundle because every kitchen needs a chopper. So I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about a few of the other items on the, on the table that I've decided that I'm going to um, promote that particular day. And then we're going to do the food demo. 
And so instead of doing the demo myself though, I get the bride to come up with me and I get her to, I explain to her what to do, but I get her to actually do it. And that way she's getting her hands on all of this Tupperware. And again, she's gonna see that, oh, like I didn't know that I wanted this, but now I really want this can opener, right? Cause it just works so, so well. So um, one that I, the one that I did at the last shower and that I really like to do at parties is the, um, I don't remember the actual name of it, but the, the um, recipe is definitely in top of the line as well. But it's a, it's a um, corn, bean, and pico de gallo type of a type of a salad. So that one works really well because you can you can bring your your serrated knife to to uh, to cut the the tomato and just explain how super well these serrated knives work. Um, you're going to use the can opener for your cans of beans and corn. You can bring your double colander to strain the corn and the um, and the beans as well. Um, what else are we using there? The can, op yeah, the can opener for sure. Talk, tell them all the wonders of the can opener because it's just so much better than any other can opener out there, right? So, um, and then the chopper, of course. So you're just gonna throw everything into the chopper, a few pulls by the bride, and you are going to have your your dip, right? Your corn and and um, and bean dip. So that's a great one to do. And a chocolate cake is always a great idea because people can see that they can, you know, whip up a dessert in 10 minutes or less. And so you can either do that. I've done the um, chocolate lava cake in the pressure cooker or do the stack cooker. Use the stack cooker and you can do your, you know, your Coke with, um, with your um, cake mix and just show people how very quick and easy it is to, to make a quick dessert. And of course, you're going to eat it right there at the shower, right? And then the whip and mix. The whip and mix is so impressive with how quickly it whips up uh, the whipped cream. And I can then talk about how long how, how long it stays whipped. And I've done I've done a test actually, and I've done my whipped cream. You know, or you can whip it up nice and thick in forty seconds, stick it in the fridge. And I did a test once, and two weeks later, it was as stiff as it was the day that I made it. And of course, I had to throw it throw it out because it was sour by then. But I just wanted to see how long it was going to um, to stay nice and stiff and formed. So. So those are really good items. I mean, any of our items are good to, to show, but those are really good showy items to, uh, to have at a party. And, and they're fun for the guest then to, or the, the host, sorry, to be able to get our hands on them, right? And think, oh, maybe I do need each, each one of these. So, um, and so then at that point, um, I'm just going to explain that after, you know, as people are eating, I'm going to stay right at this table. They can come up and handle any of the any of the items. I might actually even have the mandolin there and some potatoes. I might have some carrots there so that people can try, can try the chopper. Um, so you know, tell them that they can come get their hands on on any of these uh, any of these items and give them a try. And I'm just going to stay at the table and take their orders and and so. Um, so yeah, that's that's the end of kind of my formal part of the presentation. The host will take over and people will eat and that's when I get to talk to people that come up one by one. And then what I'm going to do with the gift money that the host has received, I am always going to encourage her to get that deluxe bundle. And here she can see how $179 can get all of the these awesome items for her. Um, it's just a fantastic start. She's gonna get more than $500 worth of items for $179 which is incredible. And then I'm going to explain to her how then we can put the party onto her account and I will show her what she's going to get as her first order reward. And I'll show her what the $600 um, sales bonus might be that month. And I'm going to show her the $180 credit that she's going to get for reaching $600. And all of the different um, benefits that there are to having having a host um, be a member in her first, or for a member to have a party in the first month of her membership, right? So it's just, she gets all these amazing member rewards. She gets this incredible um, bundle, plus she gets all of the host rewards. So it is really, really fun to bless a new bride with so much stuff right, right off the bat. So um, I think a bridal shower would be my absolute favorite Tupperware party to do. And I would not say no to one if you ever have a chance to to do one and if you're not comfortable with it um find another one of your tupperware friends who's maybe done one or at least done other parties and and do it together but um but don't yeah don't don't say no to a tupperware shower they're just really really so much fun to do so i'm just trying to think real quick if there's anything that i have forgotten to mention i think i've pretty much covered the way i run mine so 
Um, but like any party, like any shower, the sky's the limit, right? You can you can do as much, um, you can keep it simple. I, I feel like I keep mine pretty simple because that's kind of my personality. You can really um, spice it up if that's the crowd that you have. Um, if you know the host, you likely have a better idea of what kind of a crowd you're gonna have. Also makes a difference if you're going to have, um, you know, the grandma to the bride and their friends, or if you're going to have the bridesmaids and you know all of all of their their young friends, so that might determine a little bit what you're going to um, what you're going to show off and and uh, demo that day. But um, but yeah, there's lots of lots and lots of tips on top of the line. Um, you can reach up to your upline or your director to ask for more ideas or questions or send me a message if there's anything you'd like me to answer for you. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you get an opportunity to do a shower sometime. Um, they are just super fun. All right. Have a good evening.